Formula One has uh-huh. become popular. Uh, well, I shouldn't say become popular. Formula One has become a thing in America. And for me, Formula One or going to a Formula One race is more of an event versus it's about the action. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> about the ra- the actual race. <laughs> so here's my thing. The Indy 500 was popular. It still comes on TV. It was popular forever. And it lost its luster because only one or two teams could ever win. So there was no competition. Everybody knew who it was. So there was nothing for anybody to get behind. The same thing can be said about Formula One. Should America care about that, Chris? Well, you know, should America care? Probably not. Does America care? Absolutely. You know, Formula One viewerships doubled uh, since 2018, and we all know that Drive to Survive drove a huge uh, American audience towards it. So they do care, but but should they? No, because I, you know, as a Formula One fan since I was a little kid, I get a lot of, uh, you know, uh, why why does the same team win? Why are they so dominant? This is just boring and watching because they don't fully understand it. So I'm going to go ahead and say. America is not ready for how cognitive Formula One is. They want NASCAR in the Jimmy Johnson era, or they wanted Indy back when one of four guys could win it. There's so much that goes on. It's the very pinnacle of motorsports, and I don't think we like that. I don't think we like to understand that it's 50% driver, 50% you know the, the, the manufacturer, which is also not always the engine supplier, and then the strategy. I think it's too cognitive for the way Americans like their sports. So when you look at Drive to Survive, which dumbed it down, right, made it super easy, one of the most incredible Netflix shows as far as audio and video and picture quality, and really glazed over, (laughs) glazed over. I'm blazing. Yeah, yeah, really glazed over what Formula One is really about. You know, that's what hurt my heart. But, But America does care. We're here now. F1 chased the American dollar. They got three races in America. When I was a little kid, I dreamed of saving my money and going to an F1 race. Now there's one in Austin. Uh, you know, my wife sent me to the first one in Indy back when they had the, uh, the U.S. Grand Prix was in Indianapolis. So shout out, Suzanne. Uh, but, you know, now there's one in Austin. Uh, there's one in Vegas. And there's one in Miami. And the Miami track is absolutely dog poo, for the record. So I don't, I don't know if we're ready to be honest with ourselves about our, our ability to build a track is crap. You know, um, that we're not able to understand the strategy, kind of like Darren just handed at. Like, I don't know. Sunday at noon, we're coming off of a mimosa tower, and I don't know if we're really ready for Formula One and what it is. So, Hmm. you know. I mean, Darren Howard kind of says it right there. Nice way of calling us dumb. Here's my only thoughts is I – I could get behind it, but you touched on something earlier, and you said that that's not what America wants as far as sports, and I totally disagree. And here's the reason why I disagree is because we like football and we don't know who's going to win every year in football. And I go, we like the competition of not knowing that's what America likes. So if you know, who's the best, for instance, you said who the best actually was the best driver with the most money or spends the most money the right way can get the best engineers and has the best car. They're always going to win last year. There was no competition. Sure. And, and there was none. So well, why should I get behind that? Let's let's give you the equivalent and make it, you know, something that for Darren, Americans can't understand. If Patrick Mahomes played for the 49ers, who's winning the Super Bowl? 49ers. Absolutely. That's the best team. And now you have the best driver. It's really that simple. We just don't want to learn that much about what's different about the cars. They all look like open wheel Indy cars, and it's good enough. It's too complicated to get in there. We can dive into an 11 man starting offense and say, this guy's got bad hands. He's a bad route runner. Um, when Amari Cooper was, was down here with the Cowboys, there became, we fell in love with this stats yards of separation. Oh my God. Okay. Are we ready to go back to our childhood? you know, which is where we started learning about football. That's where these people started learning about Formula One and start learning about tire compounds and aerodynamics. It's so intricate and it's so amazing, but I don't think we're ready for it. But as far as being able to predict it, the NFL, we don't know who's going to win. Well, we insert this parody with the draft and then the uh, 
you know, strength of schedule and things like that. Well, F1 every four or five years inserts parity by making new engine requirements, new aero requirements. So it does the same thing. But when they got the best engineers and the best driver in his prime, because I think Max Verstappen, okay, same age as, as Patrick Mahomes, right? They're in the physical prime of their lives and he's in the best car. I'm a McLaren fan, so I get to watch my, my team get their tail kicked every weekend. But that's just how it is. It's been this way forever. Back when Lewis Hamilton, seven-time champ. Michael Schumacher, seven-time champ. Sometimes you get the right quarterback on the right team, and it goes crazy. Uh, the salary cap. There's another thing. You know, April last sat to try to level it. These guys used to be able to spend $460, $500 million to field a team. So we kind of knew who was going to be the best because they were only able to have that kind of money. Well, now they all made them come down to a $150 million cap, not including driver salaries. And it, it, it's, in, it's incited some parity. It's really yeah, they always the midfield. They always What's go it? above it and cheat. What did you say? I'm sorry. I said they always go above the salary cap and they cheat. Okay. I mean, and so does – the guy who signs Patrick million Patrick Mahomes for a half a billion, and then they restructure year three to make room for everybody else. Guys, yeah, it's but that's not cheap. Thing. They don't go over the cap though. Mm -hmm. They don't they go, don't go over, over what you're allowed to spend. Hey, the Lewis one they Hamilton literally go over. Lewis Hamilton said, "What do you got left to spend in the budget? That's what I want for my salary." And he found some other money in some endorsements paid straight to him and not through Mercedes. Guys, right. I get it. They're creative. But, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if we're ready. I think they've got to still dumb it down or we need, heaven forbid, the big crash. That'll bring Americans come running, right? F1 used to lose a driver every year in the 80s. And it really trailed off in the 90s as the car safety Im improved. But a big crash or a fireball, which is how Drive to Survive got famous. That's all we need. And we're in there, you know. It's not going to get a Bush Light sponsor, but, you know. I mean, it's a soft cap. Mitchell Foster said, even when you know about the cars, it still doesn't make the racing more exciting when it's a parade at the front. And that's all my thing. I think Formula One is great. I think it's super exciting. I think those guys are the best drivers in the world. My only issue, I shouldn't say my only issue, but my issue is, is that it's it just, I know who's going to win. I always know who's going to win. And so how can I be excited when if I root for somebody else, they have no chance of winning. I think that's what makes American sport or just sports in general so exciting. For instance, would people love soccer like they love it all over the world if they didn't know who was going to win? If they say, you know what, we have no shot, but I still so, love it. They wouldn't. And I think that's what you. gives fans the difference is that they want to get behind something that they have an opportunity to win. That's all okay. I'm asking. Let me let me help you out. If you were uh, an, an NBA fan in the '90s, did you know who was going to win the championship? Uh, when yeah. Jordan was with the Bulls, yeah, you right? did. I so, don't think you necessarily knew, but he didn't have the best team every year. Hold on, that's but the you difference. Knew who was, you knew who was going to win. What but he I'm didn't saying have is, the best team, so there was hope. There's there's hope for a lot of people, right? Let's where's be honest. The hope, the, Last year, the rest of the, the hope in Formula. The one? rest of the field was hoping on a wreck or rain because that's the only thing that can stop them, right? Okay. Just like well, when you have if a those things don't happen, which you don't control, right? Then what? Let, well, let me let me let me finish this thought here. In the '90s, we knew who was going to win in the NBA. We had two choices: who was going to win in the NFL. America got in here late. How long you been watching F1? Well, Max Verstappen is, is is just dominant. Well, he's a three-time champ. Have you been watching for three years? Who was it before that, right? Everyone who was an F1 fan was more sick of Mercedes bending the rules and Lou Hamilton seven times out. But right now, it's like, ah, I can't take the Red Bull. This has happened before. It's going to switch again. This happens in every sport. Maybe not with the same consistency, but that's what makes it even more impressive. Where there are more variables than just about any other sport, they have that kind of consistency. Are they cheating? Are they not? That's to be the term. But, but man, give it another year or two. The 2025, the cars change again. Whoever has the best engineer or copy some plans from somebody else will be super dominant. And, and, and it'll, it'll force the evolution of the sport. So uh, I think I started loving it when I was a kid because it was flat out cutting edge. Okay. Everything that you have in your car now came from there, from hybrids to turbos to Seat belts to you know crumple zones, all that kind of stuff. 
So I think that the forced evolution, if you're if you're on the cutting edge, the bleeding edge, F1 is amazing. Yes, right now they got to do something about the Max Verstappen problem because half of their fans, the half they added after 2018, don't understand dominance. They right. want parity. You know, no, I get it, and I think and, and I can get behind it. So basically, what you're saying is America just needs to hang in there and get more used to it because it's new. They need right. to just hang around for a little while and understand that. Yes. Okay. Right now one team is dominant, but it will change. Yeah. Uh, here's a question. And let me just ask you this. Cause again, you're the formula one expert. If you're asking people to hang around, is that the best way to try to build a sport? I don't know. We, I'm so, I was so sick of Tom Brady winning Super Bowls, but I didn't give up on the NFL. Yeah, but you already love the NFL. Oh, okay. Well, that's I mean, what I'm saying, I'm saying <laughs> if the the fan that's coming in right now that's looking at Formula One, you know what? I want to get behind right. it, but I know who's going to win every single race before the race starts. Sure, is that the best way to build a fan base? And let's just say America's starving, which I think it probably is for right. Formula One to be popular. Is that the best way to do it? It. It definitely isn't the best way to do it, but I think that that begs the question of F1 doesn't need the new fan. They went after them, and they got them, but they don't need them. It's the fourth most watched sport. You got soccer, cricket, what's the other one, uh, and then F1. It doesn't, you know, globally. It doesn't need the new fan, and that's what they found. They found they have a new fan problem. So they got these exciting venues, you know, like Vegas and and neon lights and night races. But just give it some time. Those new fans who got in are gonna they're gonna they're gonna learn more. Right. Maybe they'll buy some hats and shirts from their team, right? You know, like you see a lot of people don't have a team. Well, let's get an American team in F1 and an American driver. We'll get behind them, we'll wear some hats and and put some logos on the side of our car, and we'll hang on till they get competitive. So, you know, I, I'm not worried about F1, uh, you know, other than my team, McLaren. I got you. So I'm with you. So basically what you're saying for people that are out there that are on the, the fence, anybody that's out there watching, you're like, man, I want to get into Formula One, but it's not as exciting. What you're saying is keep watching, hang in there. Things will change or things can change because when they change the car, make them change the engine, all that kind of stuff. We'll kind of see if the, the, yep. the cream still rises to the top or if somebody else can take their place to be more competitive. Is that Absolutely. kind of the synopsis keep of this? Yep, keep watching and keep learning and learn why he's got a 24-second gap out front. And it's amazing because it's a different reason most races. Same gap, different reason. So I, I think that, you know, the more you learn, just, just like when you're going to your friend's Super Bowl party, the more you know about it and the more the NFL has been able to give us the backstory on some of the players, it's freaking awesome. So, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So, yeah, I, hey, I, get, I, I'm, I'm with you. Compliments now? What's going on? Hold on, hold on a second. Well, I mean, look. Here's the thing. I love the glasses, okay? Kimberly Harris loves my glasses. Don't be a hater, okay? You, you, I've known you for almost 30 years. You've never been a hater that I've known. Well, take that back. Yeah, you have. And now you're hating again. We're, we're trying to have fun on here, and now you're just hating. It's ridiculous. Give yeah, me my moment. Give me my I don't, moment. I don't want to lose easy fan points because of glasses. This is an easy fix right here. I mean, you know? I'm just saying. I mean, it is what it is. Don't be mad at me because I keep winning the debate. Don't be mad at me. I can't wait to see what the poll comes out with this week. Don't be oh, mad. Man. Come Again, on. I hope I have enough people on here. hate it. the player. Hate the game. Okay? As soon as, don't as, do soon that. as I get my mom on YouTube, I'm winning this thing. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe. Now, I, I take that back. I know Graham Graham. Graham Graham nah. ain't voting for you. I don't even know why you nah. told that lie. That's You're not right. happening. <laughs> Most of the people on here know she don't like me. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Graham Graham's on my side, 100%. 100%. Yeah. 